Greetings. My name is Andrew Bridges, and this video is about the problem determinism poses for free will and some common responses to that problem. So the outline of this presentation will be in three parts. The first part will be a three minute video, which outlines the relevance and scope of the philosophical problem of freedom, as well as how this problem relates to other contemporary problems in philosophy. Then I will present um, the problem determinism poses for free will and two common responses. And toward the end, we'll have a two minute activity to review the positions of libertarian free will and compatibilism. So let's begin with the video. Okay, that was a brief clip from the uh, movie Waking Life, which is one of the top 10 philosophical movies of all time. So the video outlined the problem determinism poses for free will. Now let's continue to discuss the problem determinism poses and as well as some of the responses. In the introduction to the Oxford Handbook of Free Will, Robert Kane explains that, quote, two features of the personal and practical standpoint are pivotal to what has traditionally been called free will. Individuals believe that they are free uh, when the following two features are met. These features are A, that it is, quote, up to us what we choose from an array of alternative possibilities, and B, that, quote, the origin or source of our choices and action is in us and not in any one or anything else over which we have no control. In the work entitled An Essay on Free Will, um, Peter von Inwagen defines determinism as the thesis that there is at any instant exactly one physical possible future. We may observe from, these, from the thesis of determinism, the problem that is posed by the concept of free will. Reflecting on the problem, Kane writes, one can understand as a consequence why such a doctrine poses a threat to free will. If one or another of the forms of determinism were true, it seems that it would be not be A, up to us, what we chose from, a, from an array of alternative possibilities, since only one alternative would be possible. And it seems that B, the origin or source of our choice and actions would not be in us, but in a condition such as the decrees of fate, the foreordaining acts of God, or antecedent causes and laws over which we have no control." End quote. Philosophically speaking, the problem of determinism poses poses for free will, uh, the problem which determinism poses for free, free will becomes two separate but related philosophical questions. The first question is whether the determinism is true. And the second question is whether indeterminism is necessary for free will. How philosophers choose to answer these questions become the two most common responses philosophers provide or the problem determinism poses for free will. The first response um, is that determinism is false and that indeterminacy, in particular, the ability to do otherwise is necessary for free will. This is the philosophical position known as libertarian free will. Note, this is a philosophical position and has nothing to do with the political position of libertarianism. The second response is that determinism is true, but that, that indeterminacy is not necessary for free will. This is the philosophical position known as compatibilism. It asserts that a person has free will if they are able to do what they want and not if they are able to do otherwise. Let us examine both of these philosophical positions in a bit more detail before moving to the concluding activity regarding these concepts. When we reflect on our lives, 
and even on how we speak about our day-to-day -day activities, libertarian free will seems most intuitive. Take, for example, the decision about what to eat for lunch. One may consider a variety of options, um, but not be able to decide between two choices. Suppose one could not decide between having pizza or having a hamburger for lunch, cheeseburger, but then eventually decides on a cheeseburger. This occurrence intuitively suggests that both decisions were available and that one could have selected either pizza or cheeseburger. The philosophical position of libertarian free will is often expressed by forking paths, not unlike a fork in the road and is often symbolized in this way to describe that alternative possibilities are both real and necessary for free will. Philosopher Robert Kane describes this position even more thoroughly as the garden of forking paths because we encounter many decisions each day and throughout our lives. A common response which libertarians have to the problem of determinism uh, that, that have because of the problem de determinism poses for free will is to argue that determinism is false, meaning that they argue that the world is completely deterministic, uh, um, is not completely deterministic in nature, and that indeterminacy exists on the quantum level. However, noting that the universe may not be entirely deterministic does not by itself explain how we humans have free will. Instead, it may only open up the possibility for free will. It remains unclear how we can go from what appears like chance into indeterminacy on the quantum level to having alternative possibilities and authentic choices. If something is indeterminate, that does not mean an individual willed an outcome freely. It simply means, like the video explained, that this may have happened by chance, even though the um, libertarian free will seems the most intuitive on the everyday experience. The compatibilist response to this problem, which determinism poses for free will, is quite different. The compatibilist accepts the thesis of determinism, but argues that free will is not the ability to do otherwise per se, but rather that free will is the ability to do what one wants to do. There are a variety of illustrations for this position of compatibilism. One good illustration is of the individual who is locked in a room, but who has no desire to leave the room. So the individual does not realize the room is locked. With this illustration, we can observe that the individual freely wills to remain in the room, but at the same time, we understand that the individual cannot do otherwise. That is to say that the individual does not have an alternative possibility. The compatibilist response to the problem determinism poses for free will by challenging the notion that free will requires alternative possibilities. Compatibilists argue that the ability to do otherwise is not necessary for one's will to be free. Philosopher Robert Kane has written at length on the philosophical problem of free will. In many, of his, in many of his works, he references Walden II, the novel by B.F. Skinner, in which a behavioral scientist attempts to create a utopia based off of the principles of behavioral science, which assumes determinism. In Kane's free will anthology, he even includes the dialogue about free will and determinism between two characters. When I first read this dialogue, I remember that was the moment I decided I wanted to study philosophy, or else I, I could have just been determined to study philosophy. It's a bit of philosophy humor. I am going to uh, read the dialogue uh, to you, and then I want you to tell me which individual, uh, individual's beliefs most closely resemble compatibilism and which ones that of libertarian free will. The names of the two individuals having this dialogue are Fraser and Castle. So I'll begin the dialogue. Mr. Castle, said Fraser very earnestly, let me ask you a question. I warn you, it'll be the most terrifying question of your life. What would you do if you found yourself in possession of an effective science of behavior? Suppose you suddenly found it possible to control the behavior of men as you wish, what would you do? What would I do, said Castle thoughtfully. I think I would dump your science of behavior in the ocean and deny men all the help you could otherwise give them and give them the freedom they would otherwise lose forever. How could you give them freedom? By refusing to control them. But you would only be leaving the control in the hands of others. A pretty good share of the control would remain in the hands of the individual himself. That's an assumption too. 
and it's your only hope. It's your only possible chance to avoid the implications of a science of behavior. If man is free, then a technology of behavior is impossible. But I'm asking you to consider the other case. Further on, our members, that is the members of Walden II, are practically always doing what they want to do, what they choose, in quotes, to do. But we see to it that they will what they, they will want to do precisely the things which are best for themselves and the community. So, which individual views most closely resemble libertarianism and which individual's views uh, most closely resemble compatibilism and why? The results? Hassel most closely resembles a libertarian because he believes that determinism is false and that the ability to do otherwise is necessary for free will. Frazier most closely resembles a compatibilist because he believes the thesis of determinism is true and that free will is the ability to do what one wants and not the ability to do otherwise. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this video.